right? Again, we've been saying this for weeks and weeks and months and months and years and years. We're not in the guessing business. We're in the data accumulation and confirmation business, and that's exactly uh, what we need. So let me give you guys a couple of names that I do like for bounces. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. So we talked about on the video uh, market for the last three, four days, last you know, four or five days, got very, very tired. Uh, we identified that again, we're still in a bull market, right? I think again, if you look at this big, big trend, everything was fine. The key point was number one, all of last week, you had to identify that stocks just got tired. Uh, there was a really high probability that they were going to at least test their uh, rising macro support. And the question is, what was going to happen next? And if you look at uh, today's session, on the outside, it looks like a crazy, ridiculous, aggressive, scary session. You look at the scoreboard and it really pops out. You got the Dow down uh, 725 points. That's, you know, that's not a little, right? That's not a little bit. You got 1% moves on the S&P, 1% moves on the NASDAQ 100. But if, if you actively participated in today's session, number one, the golden rule is any single time you get a gap down, right? You get a gap down, especially in a rising trend market, no matter how weak it's been over a short period of time, the overall macro trend. So every single time you get a, a big gap down, right? Or you know at least any sizable gap down, the initial value is always to the upside. And then you kind of reassess if the channels start to collapse after the opening range highs. And if you guys watched uh, the weekend video, we talked about how important that 355 level was on the queues. And any close below 355 on the queues was going to be a lot more potential downside bias than just an orderly back test. So this morning, the bulls needed to pass the test. Can you buy the dip like you've been buying it for, you know, for a very, very long time? Uh, can the bulls reclaim um, the 355 level on the close? And how much were these NASDAQ names that were leaders, right? How much can they possibly rally back uh, if there was an opportunity to see some macro control? And we got all that answers. We, we really did. Um, I, I, I think today, in a weird way, was a very smooth, seamless day. You had gap downs coming up uh, very aggressively. You had channels basically putting in like, I don't want to use the word capitulation channel. Capitulation is used... Um, usually when there's a downward market for weeks and weeks and months and months and people are just kind of walk, watching, you know, CNBC is your money safe, the market's in turmoil. I don't want to use the word capitulation. Capitulation doesn't happen off of the top of a range into intermediate support. It comes off the bottom. But the one thing that we definitely wanted to see, how is the psychology going to impact the morning? Were, were they able to get off the mat? Were they able to sustain some sort of rally? And is that rally going to be sustainable for more than uh, one interval? And I tell you, you've got to give the bulls um, just a lot of kudos again. I mean, you, you know, you've been hearing that a lot because the bulls have been defending a lot of really, really strong levels. And it, it, again, it really does show a testament of number one, that the buy the dip theory only works when there's a macro channel going to the right. So again, macro channel rises in a bull market. Remember, again, remember big macro bull range. Nobody buys dips when stocks are underneath supply. Okay, you try to buy a dip underneath supply and let me know what happens. It doesn't work, or at least if you, it's not going to work for a very short period of time until the market finds some sort of tradable bottom. So the idea that the bulls came back today, um, they. I don't want to use the word they held serve, right? Because again, the Nasdaq was still down 1%. Uh, the bulls still have, you know, a lot of work to do to kind of get the, you know, the, get the mojo back. But today was a really, really good start. And if you take the Dow Jones out of the equation, and if you look at the intraday charts of NASDAQ 100, right? You, you know, these are the cues right from the word go, literally right from the word go. It tested the bottom range twice. And they just rallied very, very aggressively into the close. And you see 
uh, the SPY as well, right? You, you, you te test the bottom. Uh, the SPY tested the 50-day moving average if my charts would ever work. But again, if you look at your charts, right? Great part of uh, recording live. Uh, but anyway, if you look at your charts, you'll see the S&P 500 uh, held the 50-day moving average and put in a really aggressive uh, move into the close. So you have hammers on a lot of names. Now, the question is, what happens tomorrow? Because I really wanted to see a close of the 355 level. Let me just X out of this. Let me just X out of this and I come back in. Um, but I, I really, really wanted to see a close above um, above the 355 level, we we kind of close a little below, right? The only reason I'm, I want to give the bulls a little bit of a benefit of the doubt because IBM came out with earnings. They really had really strong earnings. And if you look at the queues today, if you look at the queues right now after hours, they're above the 355 level trading uh, 355.50. So I want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. You're going to see a lot of hammers going into uh, tomorrow's session. Though that's bullish, right? That's a bullish. That's a bullish item. The only thing that bothers me, the only thing that bothers me, is that organically we didn't close, we didn't reclaim this macro area. But at the end of the day, if things start kind of reclaiming ten and eleven o'clock channels tomorrow, then we'll know this quote unquote bottom today was valid. And then we can start looking more aggressively to the upside. So this is going into tomorrow, at least at the open. Again, things change very, very quickly. But at least at the open, I want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt, right? I, 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 you know, based on today's hammers, and you look at a lot of charts, you'll see hammers everywhere, right? You see Amazon, uh, right? You see an Amazon, big, beautiful hammer. You see uh, NVIDIA who splits tomorrow, uh, who splits tomorrow, big hammer, uh, off rising support and by, by God, let me look at the stock today. The stock was up 25 points. The stock was up about 35 at one point, which is an absolute monster. And if you look at a lot of the names in the NASDAQ 100, despite, you know, despite uh, the, you know, the NASDAQ 100 being down 1%, a lot of strength. You had Tesla up, right? You had Tesla up, you had NVIDIA up, uh, you had Netflix up, you had Netflix up, you had Roku up. Apple, I get it, right? Apple is still down, but it had such a big, big run. It's kind of still getting its wind, you know, kind of getting its wind beneath his feet. So the idea that the bulls kind of survive today, not only do they survive, at least for the time being, and today's low will definitely be the line in the sand for any macro selling down the road, assuming there is not, assuming there is some. So we at least have a line in the sand. And if you are a longer term trader and you are long overnight or just long in general, you have to use today's lows uh, as your max pain. Uh, kind of going forward. And if you look at a lot of names, despite still a lot of technical damage, because remember, you know, we sold off about a week straight uh, and especially gap down very, you know, very aggressively today. So you're not just going to have breakout charts. So tomorrow's session could be a little tricky. And the reason why I say that, based on the hammers, the second day, if it plays out correctly, it should be continuation of today's bounce. The problem with bounces is, well, the, bounces, the problem with bounces are, you have to use the previous day's low. And if you look at a lot of these stocks from the previous day's low, some of these stocks are, you know, $12, $17, $18 from the previous day's low. So you can't really technically turn around and say, well, I'm going to continue this bounce. I'm going to use today's lows and everything will be great. I mean, again, how many of you guys can, can risk $18 on Roku? How many guys can, you know, can risk, you know, $80 on Amazon, right? So it's a little bit tricky. So going into tomorrow, we kind of have to do what we did today. Wait for the channels to, you know, give themselves a little bit of breathing room. Determine the, the distance between the new pivot and the next supply zone and kind of continue taking cash flow and try to keep a runner into the next, until the next area kind of gets, kind of gets tested. So it's going to be a little bit tricky tomorrow because remember, the downside channels are way below today's lows and the upside channels are very, very tight. So a lot of you guys, especially if you're trading in the options market tomorrow, especially if you're a new trader, probably not going to be your day tomorrow. I, I believe is going to be better of an equity traders, kind of a cash flow market uh, just because to take advantage of the ranges. And the last thing you want to do tomorrow, especially if you're an options trader, turn around and say, well, Tesla's at seven. Uh, what's, Tesla's at six. Uh, 
you know, 640, 645, 650, you know, I'm going to bet the 750 next week calls. Why? How? How can you possibly be so arrogant uh, to think and egotistical to think that just because you think it's going to go higher, it, it still has to take out three days worth of selling, or maybe even more, but at least three days worth of selling. And a lot of names are going to be just like that as well. So if you're an options trader, remember, not only are you fighting time, not only are you fighting price action, you have to be right, like literally now, not, not even tomorrow. You have to be literally right now. So be careful if you're trading on the options side. If you are an options trader for tomorrow, make sure you really know what the hell you're doing. Uh, because if you're wrong, if you're just taking out of the money bets, uh, assuming you think you know what's going to happen next week, you're going to find yourself in a really, really ugly uh, situation. And you don't want to put yourself in a situation that you are there to guess, right? Again, we've been saying this for weeks and weeks and months and months and years and years. We're not in the guessing business. We're in the data accumulation and confirmation business. And that's exactly uh, what we need. So let me give you guys a couple of names that I do like for bounces, possible bounces tomorrow. Uh, you had some of these stay-at-home stocks acting really, really well today. If you guys notice that Chewy, uh, Peloton, um, they acted pretty well today. Uh, there was, you know, this Delta thing apparently is really, really contagious. Again, I'm, I'm hoping for the best. I, I tried to get the word COVID out of my brain. I'm trying to get back to in life and back to normal like a lot of people. So the last thing we want to hear about, hey, stay-at-home stocks, you know, they, you know, this might close down, that might close down, especially in Europe. We don't want to hear that. But uh, you know, it had a great run today. It held the 50-day moving average and traded. Look at this candle, sick candle, and went right to the 10-day. If it could confirm the 10-day, hey, who knows? Maybe it goes back uh, into this 86, 87 level. Um, same thing with a name, for example, like uh, a Peloton, right? You got Peloton as well. Had a really, really big move. If it can start reclaiming this whole channel here and start reclaiming this on the close, who knows? If this market continues to bounce in the next several days. You could get a strong move up there as well. That looks good as well. Uh, even a smaller name like an SGOC. I know there's a lot of social media kind of rumblings about this thing. Look at the channel here. It's been rejected at the same area back to back days. If this thing can reclaim, you know, who knows? Maybe this thing can shoot up as well. Other than that, you know, names, you know, like a Roku, right? I'm watching, you know, I'm watching, you know, maybe it could reclaim the five day moving average. Uh, maybe Tesla is one day away, or maybe taken out a couple of these channels as well. I don't think it's me tomorrow, but what's cool about Tesla is we had a pivot today uh, to the short side that it held the double bottom, and then we had a pivot today to the upside that really uh, got pretty aggressive uh, towards the afternoon. So what's cool about trading beta is you, you don't have to be a bull or bear, okay? You just need to be uh, kind of confident in trading the channels and make sure uh, there's enough space. So really you know, pretty cool day today. And oh, by the way, we also caught a bounce today, really beautiful bounce today. Uh, off the 50-day moving average on uh, Square as well. But some pretty good natural pivots today. Um, and let's talk about them, right? Let's talk about them. Uh, AMC, I know it went green in a day, but AMC 32, if it builds below, uh, can flush. Not the move to 29 that I was thinking, but it went down about a buck. Okay, it went down about a buck. And now this 31 level is going to be very, very important uh, going forward. So for all you guys who are in, you know, what are they called? Gorillas? Bears? What are they called? Anyway. I don't know. Anyway, so this 31 level, it, it, that's your do or die. Okay. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to guess. 31 down the road will be a do or die. And if any close below 31, uh, it's going to have some, it's going to have some problems. So, but you know, again, nice little move, uh, nice little move on, uh, nice little move on uh, AMC. Uh, let's see what else we had here. Uh, Roku, nice move on Roku. Uh, 403 needs to build. Initially, it went to about 407. Uh, it closed really, really strong. You can see in the after hours, uh, it's trading around the 410 area. Nice move there. I think the majority, I think the majority, I keep on putting in the wrong browser. Uh, I think the majority of our pivots today was to the upside. Uh, there was a couple of downside, one, one AMC, one Tesla, uh, but everything else was to the upside. You had uh, Netflix, uh, 530, 531 needs to build. Here was uh, Netflix, right? Here was Netflix. It took out that 530, 531 area. It traded, you know, it traded as high as like one, uh, 535. Again, you, you can see so much supply here. It's not meant to be a $20 move just for taking advantage uh, of channels. Uh, Tesla, here is a short pivot. Uh, 626 held three times. That's the 50-day moving average. If it builds below, can flush, right? We, we thought we could get to the 620 level. It got to 621, right? So here is the 620. Went right to the 621 level which was a double bottom here. So the 620 is going to be huge, huge going down the road. 
And then we had to pivot back to the upside. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, take on the way down, 620 is the next stop trade at 621. Uh, and basically, that was, that was the, the, the theme of the morning. It's all about patience and letting channels develop. That's exactly what we're going to do tomorrow. Wait for these channels to develop and let the market tell us which way is right. Uh, so Netflix reports after the close, uh, 531 needs to build. You can see here how to push to that 535 area. Uh, take on the way, it adds up. Roku, take on the way. And here's the channel in the afternoon, 644, 645 uh, needs to build. And here was the Tesla channel. I caught a piece of that as well. So here's the Tesla channel right here. It took out this whole 644 area and then went right to the 647 and change letter into supply. Again, it's not supposed to be $10, $20 moves because there's no upside there's no upside of channel expansion yet. When you when you have a week of selling, you're not going to get these massive 10, 15 dollar moves unless you're talking about Nvidia. And speaking about Nvidia, they are uh, splitting tomorrow morning, uh, so it should you know it should be around you know that one 188, 190 area somewhere like that. Do the math. But anyway, just again, guys, stay calm. Uh, every single day is business as usual, up, down, or different. The channels and technical analysis are our best friend. Guys, have a great night. I'll speak to you tomorrow. And God